Welcome to our 250th episode of the Joyful Scaling Podcast. I am Judy Weber. I am so just sitting here full of emotion, so happy, so joy-filled, so thankful that, you know, kind of where we are. I, I am recording this on International Women's Day, such a day of celebration for women all over the world, those in business, those not in business, just all women, extraordinary in Christ, doing extraordinary things. And when I think of women doing extraordinary things, the first thing I go to, I'm thinking of my niece, who is a mom of three precious young girls, five and under, with a little boy on the way. And she does a masterful job of managing everything in the house. She has a a great husband, She's the one responsible for raising these girls and soon to be a son, right? She is doing extraordinary things as she cooks, as she, um, you know, diapers the little one and keeps the bigger girls clean, right? As she takes them on, you know, excursions to the park, to the zoo, to the backyard to play, right? As she gives them a bath as she homeschools them and as she squeezes in being an amazing real estate agent that is every little thing even the white the tender wipe of the face of her children that's an extraordinary thing and I'm probably going to get an emotional ladies because of all the things I've accomplished trial lawyer corporate lawyer in-house counsel um, you know director of HR at the age of 22, responsible for a multi-million dollar department within Macy's, one of their more popular stores in the nation. I did all these things, right? I've made, I've generated millions of dollars through my 30 years in business. But the most, the most accomplished thing I've ever done, the thing of which I'm most proud is being a mom. And so today on International Women's Day, I never want to hear any woman ever again say, I'm just a mom. Because that's there's no more important work out there. You are molding minds. You are molding the future. And when you do that with Christ at the center, and you are raising your children in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, wow, that's extraordinary work, ladies. So whether you are blessed to be a mom or you have children in your life and you are like the favorite aunt, right? Uh, Whether by blood or by friendship, brava, sister, brava. Don't ever think that those mundane quote unquote things don't matter because they matter more than almost anything else we could do. On this 250th episode, it's going to be a little shorter than most, I think. You know, I just want to say thank you to my loyal followers, my loyal listeners. And if you have not yet, if you listen, you know, we we're about to hit 65,000 downloads. It's insane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have not yet taken a moment to leave a rating and a review, if you have an iPhone, please do it on iTunes because that's, what's going to help us get even higher up in our global ranking. If you would, please just take a moment and leave a review. It can be very short. I would so appreciate that. Um, But I want to thank you and I want to say this podcast is for you, right? Every day, I am blessed to talk to women from those just getting started in business to those making millions. And at every level, you're working hard, you're dedicated to your clients, you're dedicated to serving to the uttermost, you're committed to your calling, you're seeking everything to bring the Lord God glory. So I want to just start out by saying thank you and brava. And keep going, sister, keep going. You know, you know, we're approaching 65,000 downloads. We are reaching this milestone of 250 episodes. And I want to reiterate why me and my team work so hard and put in so much time and effort to bring you the show consistently, many episodes a week, right? For just over two years now. And, 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 And the reason is simple. We want to help you make more money and live your calling. We've got to do it in joy, right? Otherwise, our faith 
you know, we're just being hypocrites. And, and that may sound harsh, but I want that to be convicting, not only for you, but also for me, believe me. I ask myself, am I living the faith I proclaim? It's a convicting question, right? And every day I'm sure I could say, oh, I failed there, I failed there. But hallelujah, that in Christ, there is no condemnation. But it is something I think we need to think about and be focused on. Am I living this faith? This faith that promises joy, even in the muck and the mire. So my goal with each show is that you would walk away with at least one golden nugget. You know, every guest episode, I ask that they provide a free resource for you. And I hope that you are taking advantage of that. And on my solo episodes, I always emphasize, ladies, take notes. And more than the learning, apply it. Take action on it, right? So here's what I know. With 250 episodes and amazing, extraordinary women as guests, the likes of which include you know, Kelly Roach and Molly Dare and Shanae Murray and, you know, Jennifer Kim and Kimberly Walsh Phillips. And um, I mean, just just so many incredible ladies. And I don't mean to leave anybody out. There's so many well-known and, and, and not yet known so much, but, but you could through simply binge listening to all of our episodes you would basically be getting a master's in business education, right? So if you have not yet grabbed my podcast resource guide that breaks down our popular episodes by topic like faith and marketing and sales and so on, I encourage you to do that. I'll leave the link in the show notes. You know, as I reflected about where this podcast started and where it is right now, I realized that going forward, I really want to be even more intentional about bringing you episodes, uh, you know, pointed to business growth and scaling. Because I will always want to help those just getting started and empower you to say, you can do this, sister, if you feel called, no doubt about it. But as I up-level and as I focus, which I always encourage my clients to do, it's really about the scaling. And scaling is getting from the consistent $10,000, $15,000 a month to, you know, 25, 30, 50, 100,000. Okay. So in my solo episodes, I'm going to re- be revealing and talking about my philosophy around business, right? Entrepreneurship. It is a wild ride, the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows. But with Christ, we can have joy through it all. Hallelujah. And that's the point, right? I mean, we're commanded to be joyful. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And again, I say rejoice. I mean, that's all over scripture, having joy in all things. And and, and it's a command. So isn't God just so gracious and awesome that he commands us to do things that are for our own good, right? Our obedience will bless us. It will bless others again and again and again and again. Okay, entrepreneurship, in my estimation, and I've been studying entrepreneurship for, you know, golly, I don't know, 20 years almost, it has become so overcomplicated. The marketing gurus have masterfully convinced the masses that you need to do a bunch of things, you know, all the things. And I'm here to, you know, just call that what it is. It's hype. Don't believe it. Success in business is not about working harder. It is not about working longer. It is about working strategically, thoughtfully, intentionally, and faithfully, right? That's what joyful scaling is all about. Entrepreneurship is is an entirely new and different skill set. It is like nothing else. It's not like school where it was rote memorization and regurgitation, right? And it's not even like the MBA because that's all theory, okay? So business and in particular scaling from six figures to multi-six or even seven figures, the key to all that is not more, it's less. And if you have resistance when I say that, because I know it's a thousand percent true, I urge you to journal. Why? Why do I think that's not true? 
And, you know, if, if, if you think to get to the next level requires more, in particular, more action on your part, I'll throw this out there. Are you like so many women I talk to and you are exhausted? Like that doesn't even begin to describe your level of, uh, I'm tired. I need a break. Have you ever said that? And so how, how long do you think you can sustain that? Like, you know, if you think you need to do more of that to scale, oh my goodness, is, is that encouraging oh, or is it deflating, right? Because the key to getting to the next level is not more, it's less. It's less complexity. It's less hustle. It's less stress. As Christians, we hold the key to that next level. And it's the F word. It's faith. Faith, a knowing, a firm, unshakable belief. It's faith. I'm called to business. God has promised to equip me in my calling. Therefore, right? Therefore, I can rely upon him. Therefore, my success is inevitable. Therefore, my success is available today. Do you know that? Do you believe that? Faith. Faith, belief, firm belief. Okay, it's a knowing. It is a certainty. Okay, Hebrews 11.1 1 talks about faith being the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I want to talk about that for a second. The substance. What is that substance? It's Christ. The world talks about throwing, you know, wishes and dreams and whatever up to the universe. It's, it's, that's sent up to fluff and, and, and just open air. There's nothing there. There's no substance there. We have Christ. We got to stand firm in that ladies and know, right? Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Right. The faith is the substance of things hoped for. Well, what are we hoping for? Well, let's go back to not the things, but, you know, the person of hope, Jesus Christ. In him, every promise of God is a yes and amen. So if Christ is the substance, if he is the hope, I mean, he's reliable. We can count on that. Faith is the substance of things we hope for. We hope to succeed in business. We hope to honor the Lord as we serve. Well, we can be sure that we are when we're looking to him, right? Faith, the substance of things hoped for. It's also the evidence of things not seen. What's the evidence? Well, let's read our Bible. Evidence of things not seen. You know, I don't see my success yet. Okay. We know it's coming. You know why? We look at the past. How else did God show up when it looked like, even in the case of things may not happen? And yet it was. The parting of the Red Sea. The shutting of the lion's mouth right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego coming out of the furnace without the smell, without the taint at all because of Christ, because of faith. So faith, this believing in God, trusting him, relying on him, and really surrendering to him, okay? We've got to put down the doubts, the fears, the insecurities. Those are lies. Those are lies of the enemy, We've got to surrender. And so if you are, you know, I I, I can picture this, close your eyes and see if you can imagine this. As you are working too many hours, as you know, just just it's innate in you. This is not right. I picture you like grabbing on to like a steering wheel and you're just holding on tighter and tighter and tighter and saying, I will get this done because I'm going to work hard. Nobody's going to outwork me. Have you ever thought that? I did in school. I got tested for gifted. I didn't make it. I, I, I'm not a genius. But you know what? My grades were better than most of the kids that, that did get into gifted program who were supposed geniuses. So, so I, with the work ethic my parents taught me, um, they, I, I love them so much. And, and in my own experience, I came to believe that Hard work will get me there. The harder I work, the more it's going to get me what I want. 
But entrepreneurship, I said earlier, is a whole different beast. It doesn't work like that. It simply doesn't. So that belief that hard work will get you there and harder work will get you there faster. We just have to say no to that because that's a lie of the enemy. He wants us to exalt busyness. God says, exalt me. Be still. I know that I am God. I will fight your battles. Stand back and watch how the Lord will deliver you. Hallelujah. Right? Success in life and business is, you know, less about the doing and more about the being. So again, if you're listening right now and you are tired, you are so beyond tired, you're exhausted. And that doesn't even begin to really describe where you are right now, physically, mentally, emotionally. I invite you to turn away from what you've been told to, to repent almost of that story of that belief. It's not serving you and instead choose to surrender. Stand back and watch what the Lord God almighty can do. So when I'm talking about my philosophy that I'm going to be sharing with you and, and, and my process that I'm going to be sharing with you, um, you know, faith is the very foundation of it all. Faith base, that's great. Faith is a basis of from where I operate, but, but I take it a higher level because you know me, I love higher level, okay? Faith not only is the basis of my business, but faith is what fuels everything inside. And my trademark for faith-fueled business just came through, so so excited about that. But your faith fuels everything inside your business. First, it fuels your identity, It fuels your identity in three ways. First, your identity as a daughter of the king. You are more than an overcomer. In him, you are more precious than rubies. You are so highly valued, right? And in and by and through Christ, you could do even the impossible, right? Ephesians 3.20, you know, um, God is able, hallelujah, to do immeasurably more than all we could ever ask or even imagine. And he's gracious enough to do it by his power in us. So your identity, are you firmly planted in who you are in Christ? Because when you fully embrace that, that is when you can, you know, just take these shackles off, these lies, these doubts, these fears and insecurities, and be that powerful, amazing, extraordinary woman of God. Really? Dare I say the Proverbs 31 woman who can do more than, you know, you even realize right now as you sit there and listen. Okay. So your faith fuels your identity as a daughter of the king. Your faith fuels your identity as a powerful CEO, right? That you are a decisive person, that you are bold, that you are a leader, a servant leader, the best kind of leader, right? That you are an amazing manager of your team right? You're a powerful CEO. You're a strategic thinker. We'll talk more about that in just a second. But also your faith fuels your identity as a thought leader. Do you know you're a thought leader? God wants you to be. Ah, you may be saying, but what do I, you know, what new thought do I bring to the table? I don't know. Did you ask God today? Did you ever ask him that? I believe that God creates extraordinary women, but life takes the extraordinary out of them. But see, the Lord God wants to fill you up with his truth, with who he made you to be. And that is an extraordinary woman. And so you, you absolutely are a thought leader. That should be the goal because that is what you are, sister. Say it with me. I am a thought leader in Christ. You see, you're a high level thinker. You boldly speak your message, which if you follow me, you know what I mean by that. I firmly believe that not only does God give each of us a specific purpose using our gifts and talents for him, but that he gives each of us 
a unique message that is his message that he wants delivered specifically by us delivered to the world. You're a thought leader, right? So as a thought leader, you know, you are called to bust myths. You are called to call out what's wrong with the conventional way that things are done by competitors and others in your industry. As a thought leader, you create a new path. You put out a new perspective. You develop a new way. If you are entering entrepreneurship, Or if you are looking to scale your business, even if you're at multi six figures right now, you will be stalled if you don't have this thought leadership. If you're not busting myths, if you're not calling out what's wrong, if you're not creating a new way, if you don't have this very unique message. And by the way, the Lord, no doubt in my mind, the Lord God wants to reveal his message that he has for you to deliver to the world. He's looking for you to ask him for that. Okay, so faith fuels your identity as a daughter of a king, as a powerful CEO, and as a thought leader. What else does faith fuel in your business? Well, I said everything, right? So so this faith is going to fuel, as I mentioned before, your messaging, your positioning, all of your marketing. (coughs) Excuse me. Your faith is also going to fuel your business model. Very generally speaking, either you're looking to build an empire with dozens and maybe hundreds of employees, or you're looking to build more of a lean and mean type business. Neither is better than another, right? And even within that, perhaps your business model is high-end consulting, exclusive private clients list, which is very constrained and, and you know, not expansive. You, you choose to go deep instead of wide. Or maybe you choose to go with the membership business model where, you know, you, you are more wide than deep, perhaps there is no right or wrong, but your faith and your surrender to God and his plan for you is going to dictate the business model that you decide to go with. Faith also is going to fuel your signature offer. And really, ladies, if you have a bunch of offers, talk about overcomplification over, is that a word? Overcomplification complication that it's just it's just that that that's exhausting it's not only exhausting for you and your team if you have one but it is absolutely exhausting for your audience wait wait how many different levels does she have wait she has a membership she has a course she has a group coaching thing she's got a mastermind she's got one-on-one she's got this other thing vip days i mean it's exhausting for them to figure out simplify simplify and this all important simplicity begins with focus focus who's going to give you that focus the god of order too many times we just we just allow ourselves we choose we allow ourselves to be uh you know walking in the worldly way chasing this and and pursuing that and trying this and trying that of our own might and of our own brain power and of our own strength. Hang on a second. We're faith fueled people. Christ is the foundation, not nonsense, not hype, not, you know, someone that has millions and millions of followers calling themselves a guru. We need to be more discerning ladies. If you're following someone and they don't proclaim Christ, uh, why are you doing that? Or at least if you like the substance of what they're saying, you know, but, but, you know, they're talking about woo woo -woo stuff because that stuff they're talking about, it's either of Christ or not. It's either of Christ or of the enemy. There is no in between. Just just please be discerning and don't be fooled because the enemy loves to deceive in a very subtle way. Okay, so just just be careful about that. And don't be so quick to jump on the bandwagon of a so-called guru 
who talks about the universe as if it's a God. That's a, that's a huge red flag. Okay. Anyway, your signature offer. One irresistible offer that solves your ideal client. You're not serving the world, right? One amazing offer that solves a big, big problem, an urgent problem of your audience can get you easily to a million. Well, I shouldn't say easily. My point there is only one will get you there. And when you don't have umpteen offers, the simplicity of that one, when all your brain power is focused on that one, that's going to get you there quicker. And and you're not going to feel so worn out. Okay. So your faith is going to fuel your signature offer. Your faith is going to fuel your marketing, right? How am I going to put myself out there? How am I going to deliver value before they buy? How are they going? How am I going to uh, put these, you know, thoughts that I have through my thought leadership? How am I going to deliver them? Where am I going to deliver them? How am I going to deliver them? Okay. So your faith is going to fuel your marketing. Faith is also going to fuel your sales, the way you conduct yourself on sales calls, the way you set up your sales process, all of it. And faith finally is going to fuel your delivery, over-delivering, giving them everything they expect and, and more, right? So just to tease you what's coming, Okay, so besides my philosophy, as you can see, built on a foundation, a very, very solid, firm foundation of faith. Also, you know, philosophy around simplicity in business. And what does that really look like for those at six figures and multi six to get to the seven figures? We're going to talk about that. You know, we're going to talk about focus and and what should we be focusing on and what can we leave behind, right? We're going to be talking about the belief triad, which when you conduct uh, and approach sales in this way, you will gain so much confidence and your sales and your whole selling process will actually be fun. I kid you not. I call it authentic selling. Okay. And I will be sharing my perspective on what I call pure marketing, pure marketing, meaning without extraneous or unnecessary elements, free of contamination. That's what I mean by purity. It is authentic marketing, relationship focused about service and value. Okay. I'm also going to be talking about strategic thinking and strategic planning, how important that is. Really, it's about, it's about managing our brain. No drama, no victim mentality, no fear, no, none of the garbage that is the lies of the enemy. We're going to manage our brain. And as I thought about this whole idea, you know, your brain is your most valuable business asset. Okay, because the brain is going to be where you create everything that you create. I mean, imagine this, ladies, do you understand that entrepreneurship, you created a business, you created something from nothing, right? I mean, the world wouldn't have, you know, stopped twirling around on its axis if you didn't open a business, but you did. And so you, this business appeared because you were called to it by the Lord. But, but the creation of it came from God's provision and his uh, equipping and first his desire to do this, this ambition to build a business came directly from him, right? You create something from nothing. So your brain's your biggest asset. And so we got to make sure we manage it by making intentional choices on things we're going to think about. The things we are choosing not to think about. And I love Philippians 4, 8 for that. Philippians 4, 8. 
God gave us a list. Paul, God through Paul gave us a list of what we're to think about things that are right and true and noble things that are pure, admirable, or lovely, right? If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, that's what we're supposed to be thinking about. The lies of the enemy ain't on that list. And, and, you know, I teach my clients through the joyful scaling methodology that I've, you know, created, which you may have heard about, and I'll be talking about a lot going forward. You know, it's all about thinking like a CEO, And it's funny, as I think about that, hmm, in law school, I was taught how to think like a lawyer. And that's very similar to thinking like a CEO. I'm going to talk about why in just a second. But it's it's the thinking that the world seems to say you don't have to do. Just do it my way. Just copy and paste what I'm doing. It'll work for you. Don't tell me about your specifics. Don't worry about what industry you're in. You know, just do as I tell you to do. And don't think about it. Just do it. And buy my product, right? I teach my clients, and I'm teaching you through this podcast, how to be discerning, how to think for yourself at a very high level so that you're not dependent upon latest trends and what you know, comes out of the mouths of gurus that you, my dear, right now, no doubt in my mind with Christ have the ability to figure out exactly what you need to do to scale your business. Wow. You may be one thought away from a completely different business, completely different life. It's possible with Christ. But this idea of thinking like a lawyer, it's, it's, it's very similar to thinking like a CEO because a, a, a powerful CEO makes decisions confidently, even when they don't know all the answers, they don't need to, right? A lawyer is presented with a case and I was a trial lawyer. So, you know, I, I, um, I know this intimately, We're presented with a case and I was a defense attorney representing doctors in court. So, so we were presenting with facts. Now, you know, all of these boxes and boxes of medical records, you know, when you think about it, there's no right or wrong answer about whether some doctor or some other doctor or some other thing inside the person may have caused the injury. There is no technically right answer, really, maybe in some clear-cut cases, but but more more than not, there really is no clear answer. But I was defense attorney, so I decided that I needed to build a case to advocate for my client. And let me allay your fears. If there was a situation where my doc was at fault, after review, we would politely recommend that the doctor... Uh, you know, settle. But, but like a CEO, a lawyer decides this is what I'm doing. Right. And they move forward. Okay, great. This is the decision. I am offering this signature offer and it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread for my client. And here's why. And I'm going to build this offer with that mindset. Right. I'm building something because I decided that what I build is going to be excellent. It's going to be great. It's going to serve like nothing else because I decide that it will. And so I take action on that using my most valuable business asset, my brain. And so when you think like a CEO or in this instance, thinking like a lawyer strategically, right? You, you, you're using your brain, you're strengthening those muscles and you're thinking not, you know, oh gosh, I don't know. And, and am I right? Or am I wrong? Or I don't know the specifics. How do I do this? Instead, you say, I am doing this and you go to work to do it. You know, and, and maybe you do ask your questions, hmm. What's the best way to do this? But it doesn't come from a place of drama and confusion and lack. It comes from a place of confidence, 
from a place of, uh, you know, I got this. It comes from a place of, this is going to be awesome. From conviction, from commitment, from determination. That is where your best stuff will be created in that space, right? From a place of abundance, not scarcity. From a place of power, not fear. Where have we heard all of that before? In the Bible, God's holy word, right? And one other parallel between thinking like a lawyer and thinking like a CEO. For lawyers, especially, well, I guess I'll even transactional lawyers, but because I'm a trial lawyer, I will emphasize that, that, you know, lawyers need to work smart. And that means that they understand words matter. They understand presentation matters and preparation matters. But ultimately, you can't spend too much time over preparing. You've got to actually get out in court and deliver and do right? So similarly, as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, your words matter. The words you use to describe who you are, what you do, who you work with, why you're the best, how you present, whether that's on video or through words, through your website, through social, how you prepare versus willy-nilly, oh, oh, got to do my post today because so-and-so said I must. No, no, you get to decide. You're working smarter, strategically, with intention, okay? Managing your brain. All right, ladies, once again, thank you for being with me on this amazing ride to episode 250 to nearly 65,000 downloads. If you found this useful, would you please take a moment and leave a rating and a review? If you have not yet gotten my podcast resource guide, check out the show notes. And, oh, I'm so glad I remember this. I want to hear from you and I want to feature you here on the show. So also in the show notes, you're going to see a link directly to a voice note app on my podcast page of my website where I want to hear I want to hear feedback. I want to hear your questions. I want to even hear a pitch. Hey, Jude, I would be great for the show. And here's why, right? I want to hear from you. Maybe even leave a review there after you leave it on iTunes. I will be going forward, starting to play those voice notes. So check out the link here in the show notes. And I can't wait to hear your lovely voice and feature it here so that women in 30 countries and more around the world will know who you are and hear your voice. So I look forward to hearing from you there. I love you, sister. Happy and blessed International Women's Day. And I will see you next time.